and then we can, of course, also connect here that the students go into the year and start with development of aircraft and so on. And you, and you have this growing spiral of, of, and spreading the information out in the society. Of course, we are working closely with universities, research institutes, science parks, etc. We are participating in the National Aeronautics Research in Sweden and also in the uh, 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 European research programs like Clean Sky and this uh, type of uh, initiatives which is in, in Europe. Cooperation with customer countries, of course, uh, with suppliers, putting requirements on the suppliers. We'll also uh, put uh, uh, knowledge into the supplier base, just working with, uh, with this. We have an office, office in Boston, MIT, and we are working with defense and research institutes, etc. When it comes to, to financing, I think for, at least for the national aeronautics research in Sweden, I think that 50% of that is uh, financed by, by the government, and these money are then routed to uh, the university through the, uh, through the industry to get the industrial connection. I may be wrong there, but I, I, I have a uh, view on that it should be so. Of course, Linköping University is very close to where we have the uh, aeronautics uh, uh, division where we manufacture and develop the Gripen aircraft. So it's quite natural. There is a research program which is called Link Lab ongoing where uh, there are study being done on uh, autonomous flights of uh, uh, unmanned helicopters, for example. You can control them from a, from a control room. You can send them into an area where you shouldn't go in if there had been an accident or whatever. But you could also, they're also studying how to send these type of vehicles in um, with some uh, artificial, artificial intelligence and uh, then uh, uh, produce a, a report back what's happening and so on. Of course, the uh, education, uh, there is an education in aeronautics uh, at the university, and uh, we have some uh, industrial doctorates, I think it's called. Uh, uh, people are doing their uh, uh, doctor's thesis. They are employ uh, employed by Saab. They are doing their doctor's thesis 50% at least at the university, participating in the education and the project uh, for different uh, type of demonstrations and projects. And in that way, we have a very close connection with, with uh, the university. So what's uh, the Saab group? What's the future core? Or what is the non-core? There is a, a, a company, uh, uh, what is called uh, section or uh, uh, organization, a part of the uh, in the in the corporate function, which is called Saab Ventures. They have a technical in, in expertise, uh, work with industrial, industrialization and market, uh, look at on the markets, etc. To find information which we need, or companies or technology which we need to spin in for our future core business but also identify the uh, technologies we have developed and try to uh, spin them out for, from the company. Because if they are not the core, they will not develop very, very well within the company. Then it's better to create a new company and uh, spin out. So here on the, on the uh, left side is some examples of... Uh, of uh, companies which have been uh, spin in, so to say. The intelligence surveil video surveillance, for example, that's for the, the civil security and these type of things. And if we look on the other side, 
there is quite a number of companies which have been created to and, they, and span out with the venture capital. Normally Saab owns uh, uh, a part of them still, but they are separate companies and not part of the, the Saab core, so to say. There is one Minesto, which is uh, taking electricity from the tides and ocean currents, which is technology which is uh, coming from, from Saab, if I remember right. Uh, there are these track gap as we, as we talked about earlier, and I will just show a short, uh, another short uh, video. No, sorry, wrong one. Can I stop that one? Let's see if it works now. Yes. This is really the the, uh, the information behind where uh, what we showed before. That's uh, each player. You can you can uh, have a mark on each player. You have the mark on each ball, so you, you on the ball and so on. So you can follow that. This is used in this system tracker, but you can always fi also find other things, other areas where you can look for irregularities and so on, from uh, on an airport, for example, or in, for civil security systems and, uh, and all of that. Another, another spin-off is the three-dimensional rapid mapping. which is now a, a company created around this. And here you are coming and flying in over Stockholm. And in real time you create a three-dimensional map of the city. This is a, uh, a, the technology is from uh, the, uh, I think it's a, the seeker on, on missiles or something like that. And of course, this has uh, have then uh, improved or made it, made it much easier to do a 3D map over, uh, over an uh, area. Just fly over it and you, uh, you have a map in real time. During the spring, there have been a, a book published related to advanced development and spin-offs. It's a, a professor in Stockholm, Gunnar Eliasson, who is a professor emeritus at Royal Institute of uh, Technology, KTH, in Stockholm, Department of Industrial Economics. This study was presented the 17th of, of May at the Swedish Entrepreneurship Forum in Brussels. There is, uh, he, he's talking about advanced public procurement as industrial policy. 